Hello, welcome to the first video of the Human Biology course. In this video, we will cover the interaction between what we eat and drink and our bodies and how it all affects our health. Let's start by talking about the three main macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. Carbohydrates are usually found in fruits, vegetables and grains and are the main energy source for certain types of cells in our bodies, such as nerve cells and red blood cells. Carbohydrates can be divided into two groups, simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Simple carbs are also called sugars, and they exist in two forms, monosaccharides when they are composed of a single molecule, such as glucose and fructose, and disaccharides when they are composed of two molecules, such as lactose. Complex carbs are the ones composed of more than three molecules and can also be divided into two groups, oligosaccharides when they have between three and ten molecules, and polysaccharides when they have more than ten molecules. Glucose, which is a sugar, is the most abundant carbohydrate. It is stored as starch in plants and in animals it is stored as glycogen. When we consume too much glucose, it is converted in our bodies into glycogen, and is stored in the liver and muscles. When we are in need of glucose to fuel our bodies, we use the stored glycogen and break it down to form glucose again, which can then be used by our cells. Carbohydrates can either be glycemic or non-glycemic. The former can be digested and absorbed in the small intestine, which raises the blood glucose levels and therefore triggers the release of insulin to regulate the amount of glucose present in our blood. The latter are not digested and absorbed in the small intestine and therefore don't have an impact on blood glucose levels, such as fiber. A concept that is very important when we talk about carbs is the glycemic index, or GI. This is a way of ranking foods based on their immediate effect on blood glucose levels. So a high GI indicates a food that is readily absorbed and raises the glucose levels quite fast and vice versa. Here is an example of some foods organized by their GI, from higher to lower. Instant mashed potatoes, rice krispies, jelly beans, white bread, ice cream, white rice, and bananas. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate which is found in plants. It can be divided into soluble fiber which dissolves in water and is digested by gut bacteria, an insoluble fiber which is not soluble in water and just passes through the intestines without being digested. The consumption of soluble fiber has been linked with lower risk of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, and the consumption of insoluble fiber helps with constipation, regulates bowel movements and reduces intestinal inflammation. And more, eating fiber also reduces the risk of colon cancer, obesity, heart disease and it even helps lose weight. Let's talk about proteins now. The building blocks of proteins are called amino acids and there are 20 of them. Nine of them are considered essential amino acids as they need to be in our diets and the remaining 11 can be produced in our bodies by transforming other amino acids. These building blocks join together and form peptides and then these peptides join together to form polypeptides which then fold into themselves into different shapes giving proteins their unique shape and function. Let's take a look at the chain of events that allows proteins to have such complex shapes. First, the amino acids link to form a chain of polypeptides. This is called the primary structure. Then, the polypeptides form specific shapes called either beta pleated sheets or helices. This is the secondary structure. Then, they fold and cross links between the amino acids to stabilize the structure. This is achieved by forming hydrogen and ionic bonds, as well as disulfide bridges. This is the tertiary structure. Finally, two or more of these polypeptides join together to form globular or fibrous proteins. This is the quaternary structure. This whole process can be reverted, causing the proteins to lose their shape and function, a process called protein denaturation. This can be caused by alcohol, heat, heavy metals, bases, or acids. Finally, we have the lipids, or fats. These are insoluble in water, hence the common saying, oil and water don't mix. There are three types of lipids, triglycerides, phospholipids, and sterols. 
Lipids are made up of fatty acids and these can be divided into two categories, saturated fatty acids and monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. The former stack well together and are solid at room temperature such as butter and lard. The latter do not stack well together and are liquid at room temperature such as oils. Similarly to amino acids, there are two types of essential fatty acids which need to be included in our diets. Linoleic acid or omega-6 which is found in vegetable and nut oils and alpha-linoleic acid or omega-3 found in fish and some plant sources. Now some facts about fats. They are mainly used during endurance exercise. Fats are a major fuel during rest. They regulate cell function and maintain our cell membranes and they help us feel full. However, excessive intake of fats could lead to cardiovascular disease, obesity and certain types of cancer. Now moving on to the micronutrients that we should include in our diet. Vitamins and minerals. Vitamins are organic molecules which are extremely beneficial for our bodies, maintaining our bone and tissues healthy, strengthening our immune systems, improving our eyesight and removing harmful substances from our bodies. However, vitamins do not supply energy to our bodies. That is up to the macronutrients mentioned earlier. Vitamins are simply the behind the scenes staff helping our body processes run smoothly. Vitamin A is fat soluble, has strong antioxidant properties. Animal sources of this vitamin include eggs, cheese, oily fishes, milk and yogurts. Plant sources include yellow, red and green veg. And fruit sources include mangoes, papayas and apricots. A deficiency of this vitamin can cause vision problems and development issues. And on the other hand, an excess of this vitamin can lead to hair loss, other vision problems, spontaneous abortion in pregnant women, as well as skin and bone issues. Vitamin B is water soluble, and it is often found in peas, bananas, oranges, nuts, breakfast cereals, and certain breads. A deficiency of this vitamin can impact physical activity. Vitamin C is water soluble, and it is found in citrus fruits, peppers, strawberries, black currants, broccoli, brussels sprouts and potatoes. A deficiency of this vitamin can cause bleeding gums, teeth problems, weakness and depression. Vitamin D is fat soluble and it is often found in oily fish, red meat and egg yolks. And obviously from direct sunlight. Direct sunlight on our skin induces the body to produce this vitamin, but always be aware of the negative effects of sunlight and how to protect yourself from them. Vitamin E is fat soluble and can be found in plant-based oils, nuts, seeds and certain cereals. And finally, vitamin K, which is fat soluble and can be found in green leafy vegetables, vegetable oils, cereal grains, and a different form of this vitamin is also produced in our bodies by intestinal bacteria. Minerals are inorganic substances and they are involved in fluid regulation, energy production and bone and blood health. They can be divided into major and trace minerals depending on their recommended quantity, either more or less than 100 mg per day. Calcium and magnesium are two important minerals, with the former being involved in bone development, muscle contraction and enzyme activation and the latter being involved in bone structure and also acting as a cofactor for certain enzymes. Other important minerals include chloride, phosphorus, potassium, sodium and many more. There are three main ways to give the body the nutrients, both macro and micro, that it needs. The first one is through a balanced diet with plenty of fruit and veg. The recommendation is five a day and plenty of water to maintain the organs and cells functioning smoothly. The second is through supplements, mostly vitamin and mineral supplements. And this is a way that is often used when on specific diets such as vegan, gluten-free, etc. It is always better to get these nutrients from their source whenever possible. And the third way is to combine a balanced diet with other things such as sports drinks, protein and carb supplements and more. This should only be done by athletes to meet the body's requirements for intense physical activity. There are three types of sports drinks, 
isotonic sports drinks, which mimic the concentration of salts and sugars found in the body, allowing the replenishment of fluids during physical activity. This is a good supply of sugars. Hypertonic sports drinks, which have a higher concentration of salts and sugars than found in the body, and these are usually used for higher intensity physical activity. And hypotonic sports drinks, which have a lower concentration of salts and sugars than found in the body, and are mostly used for replenishing fluids whilst exercising. So here's a little recap of today's lesson. There are three macronutrients, carbs, proteins and lipids. Carbs are used by brain cells and blood cells, making it an extremely important macronutrient. Glucose is the most abundant carb and it is stored in our liver and muscles as glycogen. Fiber can either be digested in the intestines or not. Both types provide immense health benefits. Proteins are made up of amino acids and have complex shapes which allow them to perform specific functions in our bodies. Lipids, also called fats, are made up of fatty acids and are our main fuel during rest. Saturated fats are less healthy and are mostly found in dairy products and meats. High levels of bad cholesterol in certain diseases are associated with overconsumption of saturated fats. Monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats are healthier and are usually found in vegetable oils, avocados, nuts, seeds and fish. Consumption of these fats increases the levels of good cholesterol. There are six main vitamins that should be included in our diets. A, B, C, D, E and K. Vitamins do not supply energy to our bodies, but they are involved in our body processes and are extremely beneficial. Minerals, much like vitamins, do not supply energy, but they are involved in numerous body processes. Some important minerals include calcium, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium and sodium. A balanced diet consists of a large portion of fruit and veg, at least five a day, plenty of water, a reduced amount of animal products, and it is important to avoid overconsumption of processed foods, simple sugars and saturated fats, as they have been linked to numerous health issues such as cancers, obesity and type 2 diabetes. That was it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next lesson for the Human Biology course. Bye!